So I feel like it was me leaving my comfort zone. Lagos was too much of a comfort zone for me. So I spent 25 years of my life in Lagos. We googled Port Harcourt and there was a lot. Militancy, all bone queen, all spirit. I slept off in the car with my mom and woke up in a hospital with my face born. Well, I just found myself, my hand, my right hand is my active hand and it was in a cast and mm. So I'm like, what's happening? What is happening? They didn't even allow me to see my face. I'm more likely to, I'm, I'm more likely to dress like an Indian woman mm. with the with the dots mm. than a Calabari woman where mm. I'm from. It's not because, like I tell my assistant, it's not because it's luxury, it's a necessity as a content creator. A lot of times, I mean, there are many times I feel less less of myself. I feel like, oh, I can't do this. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition another episode of the entrepreneurs connect show as always we're here telling african stories for african businesses african entrepreneurs with an african context today is going to be nothing short of amazing because i have a sensational guest in the house as always i want to ask you to subscribe to this channel if you're watching on youtube right now as i'm talking to you 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 that I'm talking to right now. Good. <laughs> Click on that subscribe. Click on it. Don't say I'll do it later. Did now. I've done it. Great. If you're listening on Spotify and Google Podcast as well, make sure you subscribe to this podcast because we have more stuff coming up for you every day. And guys, do you also know that the bigger we get as a community, the more we grow, the more quality guests we are able to attract. Do you want to see your idolos on this podcast? Then make sure you subscribe as well so that when we present our case, they will say, Yes, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Right? Great. So, without further ado, let's get into the show for today. I have an amazing guest in the house, Tony Briggs, the founder of Potter Cutting Pictures. So, if you haven't seen that page where they still post Potter Cuttings, Potter Cuttings, yeah. this is Tony. If you haven't seen that person that has to do live video every time, that she's, she's driving past all the weekends flyover. That is Tony. All right? Um, how are you, Tony? Welcome to the show today. I'm very well, thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so, I have to first thank you for honoring my invitation, for honoring our invitation. It's usually difficult to pull you out <laughs> based on who you be, but <laughs> you're here today. Thank you for the honor. Thank you so much. All right, Tony, we're going to have a real conversation right now around what it is that you do, how you started. This is, this is the show to be vulnerable. This is the show where we don't sugarcoat mm -hmm. things. We talk about real stuff, the, the successes, the failures, the lessons you learned, and hopefully everybody can learn, learn as well. Yes. All right. So this is where we meet you for the first time. Mm -hmm. Who is Tony Briggs? Where did you grow up? What was life growing up like for you? Okay. So hi guys, my name is Tony Briggs. I'm a content creator, an influencer, a blogger, and I can be anything I want to be. And Come I on. run. <laughs> Reminds me of that. Did you watch KKB show? Remember yes. That? I if I do, mm, 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 I can be anything I want to be. So I run a platform, Potakot in Pictures, which promotes Potakot, the good people, the good culture, the good places, and the good life of Potakot City. Mm. So like I said earlier, I was born and bred in Lagos, Omoiko. So I spent 25 years of my life in Lagos, and wow. I was, I went to University of Lagos Star School, University of Lagos Secondary School, and then University of Lagos. And after I graduated from medical school, I needed to come back home. I was homesick. And I wanted to come back home seven years ago, and I googled Portugal City because my parents had relocated like about 20 years ago, and I wanted to come home because I was homesick. And then I googled Port Harcourt, and I'm like, ah. So my friends were like, Tony, why, why are you going there? They already know you in Lagos. I mean, I mean, the only language I could speak was even Yoruba. So I mean, mm -hmm. I was, I could, I could, I could do, I could flex in Lagos. And they're like, why are you moving back? And we googled Port Harcourt, and there was a lot, militancy, all mm -hmm. bunkering, all mm -hmm. spirit. They're like, Tony, do you want to go and kill yourself? And I'm like, my parents have been living there. They've not been killed. I feel like I want to connect with my people. So I'm somebody who is big on indigenous languages and people. I'm a people person, so I wanted to learn my language. I wanted to know my people and then connect. And so I'm like, no, I'm going back. And luckily for us, or for my family, the weekend of my convocation was the weekend of my brother's wedding. So it was, it was smooth for me to move to Edo State and then move to River State. And that was how I was relocating back to Port Harcourt City because of the, I wanted, I was, the, I was yearning to know my people and my culture. Mm -hmm. And 
Unfortunately for me, I had an accident on my way back. I slept off in the car with my mom and woke up in a hospital with my face burns. And I'm like, what's Who happening? Was driving. So my mom was driving and, wow. and she kept pinching me like, Toye, don't sleep. I'm feeling sleepy. Don't sleep. And I, we just slept off, That's both crazy. of us. So I think I slept off before her and she slept off. And before we knew it. Where did this happen? Um, I think Mbeama. Yes. Mm, that's by us. Yes, around that road. And in fact, if I show you pictures, you you won't believe we came out alive. I mean, wow. Um, so a walking uh, miracle. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> so and that's how we were there. And luckily for me, God had it. My mom was well. She was whatever. And then they sent ambulance to us to pick us up as exact as big people. And we were taken to the ICU. And right there on the bed, I was. I mean, I I I just found myself. My hand, my right hand is my active hand, and it was in a cast. And mm. so I'm like, what's happening? What is happening? They didn't even let me see my face. By the time I went to the mirror, I saw my face. I was always crying every day. But what kept me there was, I was we're being served good food. We we're giving good treatments in Port Harcourt <laughs> City. I mean, I remember when I fell in in Lagos, when I was, as a medical student, even, we have, uh, there was a day I was practically queuing. I had to uh, hold my head, because they even used to treat us at the balconies in in Lagos then. But I was supposed that we were giving preferential treatment. I mean, it was a very good ambience and I met a lot of intellectual people, intellectual doctors who knew what they were doing, we were taking for a lot of MRI scans and I'm like, oh, so this place is not as bad as the media portrays it. And then, there and there on the 19th of March, I made a decision to open, open a page, Port Harcourt in Pictures, and my, vi- my mission then was to promote Port Harcourt City and promote Port Harcourt people. And also, I wouldn't take all the glory. I also took a cue from India. So I've never been to India, but here it is the dirtiest place in the world. Mm. But guess what? When you watch their Bollywood movies, I mean, Josh, if, um, Joseph, if we were to do a traditional, traditional event today, you're more likely to, I'm, I'm more likely to dress like an Indian woman mm. with, the, with these dots mm-hmm. than the Calabari woman where mm-hmm. I'm from. Because of the way they portray their culture in their movies, Bollywood, they don't show the dirtiest part. Meanwhile, they push, I mean, I mean at the time, Bollywood was like number one. So I, I took a cue and I'm like, okay, Toya, if India can do this, why do we keep promoting the bad side and amplifying the bad side of Port mm. And media is a very strong part of every city, every community, True. every organization. I'm like, okay, so Toya, I'm going to start off this. Nobody may be doing it, but start off and start promoting the good side. And from there, so that posting about the food we're giving and the places I was going to in my neck collar, I'll be videoing the road. And that was the birth of Port in pictures. Beautiful. Two things. Yes. Two things. <laughs> Have you finally learned your language? You said you came back to learn your language. No. How, how, how is it going with that? Honestly, do you know that because of that, actually, so I, I pushed my service to the Ministry of Health because I wanted to learn, but I mean, we don't speak. I mean, I mean, I think because, 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 I mean, we have over 23 local governments in River State mm-hmm. and lots of languages. So, um, my language, Calabar, is not the predominant language, and even the predominant one is not spoken often. So, we speak English and Pidgin here. We didn't speak Pidgin for River State. So, but I've been able to learn Pidgin, at least. Kudos to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I haven't learned my language, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. People leave from other cities to Lagos. You left from, from Lagos to, to Port Harcourt. <laughs> Yeah, like the second person asking me this. Why? So, um, like I was explaining to somebody a few days ago, so I feel it. I feel just like when I attended social media, I had somebody say, ah, Toye, all of us, they come up for river, so you, they go there. So I feel it's about leaving your comfort zone. So I feel mm-hmm. like Lagos was too much of a comfort zone for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure if I were in Lagos, I won't be able to even reach this level I was because I would have been playing mm-hmm. mid-level. Mm-hmm. But I think moving and transitioning to a new whole environment had to... I mean, put fire on me because, I mean, I was living with my parents, but I, could, I didn't want to, I, I stopped collecting money from them mm. two years after I graduated. I'm like, no. I stopped eating at home three years after I graduated. Mm. So, and for me to be able to do that, I had to, I had to, I had to put fire on myself. And so I feel like it was me leaving my comfort zone. Lagos was so much of a comfort zone for me. I mean, I wanted to, I wanted to be, I wanted to do things with that, with reckless abandon. I mm. wanted to do things that would, push me to the next level. I mean, um, in 2015, I started listening to the likes of Samade Yemi. In fact, okay. I attended his Day Star Leadership Academy. And nice. they, I mean, what people kept saying there was, you can be more, you can be more. So I feel like it's about leaving my comfort zone. I mean, Lagos was too comfortable for me. And I think moving here just opened and expanded my horizon and made me, made me, made my thinking cap start functioning. Mm. So I've, and same too, I re, same too, I realized that people too also relocate from here. 
to other places also try so i think it's more about living your comfort zone and i'm 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 i'm, I'm encouraging everybody there that if you feel like if where you are is not enough for you please move out step out of your comfort zone there's a lot more you can do outside your comfort zone do you think that um pressure a healthy amount of pressure is good to help you move to your desired destination Yes, so I'll take a cue from one of the messages I listened to on Sunday. So I feel like pressure is, I mean, sometimes pressure, um, should I say calamities are actually good goodness in disguise. So mm-hmm. at that moment, it's, it's pressure, but it's something, I mean, if you don't move from, if pressure doesn't come, you won't be pushed to your next level. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a good thing for transitioning pressure is very good um, i mean I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you mean pressure like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a lot of so i feel mm-hmm. like yes yeah, so pressure is one criteria for transitioning beautiful so you're back in port Harcourt now you're out of the hospital mm-hmm. what happened next so yes, by the way what, what did you study in school so i studied medical physiology i actually got into school to study dentistry and i moved to medical physiology mm. So you're back, you're back in Port Harcourt now. You start yes. looking for a medical job or... Yes, yeah, so that was the plan, actually. I was moving back to come and start working in the hospital. My mom was the HOD of the Department of Anesthesia and UPTH, and okay. I wanted to just come and they slot me in and give me a job. I mean, and I sit down with my mm-hmm. organizer so and then sit down and get like, yes. So if I, up until now, I, see, I still have my stethoscope, I still have my med, I have my gowns, I have all board. That was what I wanted to do. You know this thing about when you finish from school, you're waiting for uncles to give you a big job. That's what actually what I, what I wanted to do. Come and sit down in the oil company, be like the head in the medical in the medical department and all. But I think God had, God had other plans, and I'm happy that even though I didn't study anything relating to media entertainment, I'm thriving in this industry. Beautiful. So, for that got in pictures, what has the growth been like since then? Oh, well, it's not as expected, but we're not where we were seven years ago. We clocked seven years ago, um, seven years, a few months ago. We started seven years ago. We started ago. seven years ago, wow. and we were seven on the night. And you have been consistent for seven years. Oh, well, yes, we've been posting every day for the past seven years. Beautiful. I mean, I think also because the, I see, I see how Portugal people want to be more, and steady, I see people who actually not being celebrated, and that's what my page does. So I feel like, mm. Thankful, thanks to Portugal people who have also been doing good in their different area. Because without them, there's no content. Mm. I mean, my 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 page my page tries around Portugal City. So, if Portugal people are not thriving, it means my page will not try because we are supposed to be posting the good things, the good culture, the good places, and the good people. So, I I'm happy that there's been growth. I mean, I told I told somebody that um um now, if you if you check the trend in the last two years, there's been an influx large influx of a lot of brands into Port City mm-hmm. and I'm super excited. I mean, brands that even left are coming back to mm-hmm. do events, to set up businesses and I'm really thankful about that and I'm thankful to my brand and other people who have partnered to push Port Harcourt and put Port Harcourt on the radar. Mm-hmm. Seven years <laughs> deep in this game. Mm-hmm. That is like, that's like super, super <laughs> commendable. Mm-hmm. But how was it when you started? Did you start making money immediately? Did you take a job? Uh-huh. Like, how was it like? So, well, when I started, I was serving. I was serving at the Ministry of Health. It wasn't easy for me. So it was just basically just posting and posting. To be honest, I didn't even know I could make money. It was just like, so like, okay, I, I, don't, I, I don't know if I mentioned, but I got in picture was supposed to be a pseudo page for me. So I didn't want to be post. I didn't want people to know what happened to me or what I was going through. So it was yeah. a page where I just post randomly. I'm, I'm somebody who lost social media. If I, when I was growing up, when my mom is angry with me, she seizes my phone because I was a very, I was a phone freak. Mm. Even with Nokia 3310, I, I loved, I would be playing my games. I was a phone freak. So it was, I, I, needed, I, I didn't want to be active on my personal page, but I wanted another studio page, which product could just help me. And so what I used to do was, I was, I didn't, I was just like supposed to be a fun page to be mm-hmm. honest. I didn't even know that there was money. There was social media money. So I just wanted to be posting about protocols. So what I would do is when on my way to work, I was serving at the Ministry of Health. I would in the bus, I would sit in front of the bus and I'd just be videoing roads, videoing places unknown to me. People, protocol people who were not in the city, who had relocated or had moved, were happy to see these clips. So somebody would be like, Oh my god, see where my mom used to sell things at um uh, at Abar Road. Oh wow. my god, I remember this roundabout. Oh, this used to be this. And so whenever I'm, I'm live on my page or I'm posting, like, oh, madam, we know this place. You're making us connect with. And people, I think 
people were entertained with this content. So I'll go to my own market, I'll slap, snap a wrinkle, snap the, and people were like, oh my God, we missed this. So that's how the page grew till about three years after when I was surprised somebody sent me a message and said, ah, madam, can you take this one five and make a, I'm like, one five for one, like, please make a post for us. I'm like, what does that mean? I'm that like, was the first real money yeah, you the real money, one five. So I'm like, I'm like, what does, I'm like, what does post, what do you mean by she post? And she's like, post for me and that was how it started and that was how mm. the page got monetized so i and also i did not stop them remember i did not learn or have anything to do with was media. that like a revelation moment for you yes like it was when somebody brought out one five yes yeah, so I, so i was like oh my god and that was when it occurred to me that oh this is what linda kg because i used to wonder i mean when I was in school, I had a lot of medical bloggers and bloggers, okay. but I didn't okay. understand. I had fashion bloggers. You well. didn't understand how they made I didn't money. understand. So, I'm like, so I used to be like, why would I just wear a dress and be snapping? Mm. Why would I just talk about, gossip about somebody? Mm. I didn't know there was something called media money. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm happy media that. Money. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. So, that was actually from 1.5 to 5K to 10K to... Wherever it is at now. To wherever it's heading to. <laughs> So that's it. So um, it, it was. It wasn't something I planned to do, but along the line, it's something that I'm. I'm fully soaked in right now. So if I get it right, you you took a job first. Yes. Yes. You are working in a nine to five. Yes, I was in a nine to five. This one was. Yes. After even after serving at the Ministry of Health, I I was also working in a, in a makeup studio for a, for a while. Then I, I started working in an event center till 2021, and here I am, a full content, a full blown content creator and social media influencer seven years deep now what do you think like what do you think that oh if i had known this back then i would have been much better right now what do you think you you what do you wish you knew before you started okay so i wish i knew that um nobody loves you on social media so um because i think i i i got so emotional and i was always i was expecting everybody to love me love me and i was and when when it wasn't going my way i was flaring up so first of i think what i one thing i wish i knew better was first of all social media is just a space for you to come and do your thing there's no don't come and look for validation online so mm. Mm. don't seek validation on mm. social media do your thing and leave whether good or bad do your thing and leave so i think one thing was i was seeking for validation online and it got a lot for me to know who i was and know that oh so people are just there to troll you. Man, there are people called trolls, and mm-hmm. that is their job. Mm-hmm. That is their job, and I think that's where the where pressure comes. They're, they're the ones who, who are supposed to push you. Then people would always talk. So it's mm-hmm. left for you to stay focused. So another thing was I wasn't focused, and thank God for deliverance. Then one thing I also knew was that um, not everybody is your enemy online too. So there were people who I thought were against me, and I the way I reacted was not the way I should have reacted. Mm-hmm. And also, not everybody's an enemy and don't seek validation online. So I think those are the two things that stood out for me and I've learned differently. And okay, maybe the last thing was, if I knew that I started this like 20 years ago, because <laughs> I would have made, maybe I would have been a billionaire, yeah, I would have made more money. So, but thank God for how it played have out. You, have you done any other business exercises this before? Like started something that failed and... and okay, I won't say like fail. Well, f- on the side, I sell drinks. So I own a page, Hibiscus I sell drinks, but it's on and off. Basically, um, I won't say it failed, but I think it's just that I, I was putting in a lot, but my assistant didn't understand it. So I think for nights on hold, but we're coming back. So I think that's the only thing I've done. I've delved into. But when I was in school, I used to make bed sheets. I'm not lazy. Mm. I used to sell bed sheets and I used to sew, but all that is in the past now. We're just focusing on content creation. <laughs> mm. Okay. So uh, we are going to enter into one part of this yes. show that I like right now. And okay. it's, it's like the get to know me better segments okay now this episode is the first episode where we're introducing this uh-huh, why so me? you guys are in for a treat <laughs> so Tony, what's your best food rice actually i don't like food i take pastries so mm. gelato and cakes are my best gelato. yes and <laughs> cake so any type of mm. cake and gelato yeah good for me what's your favorite color blue blue beautiful what is who's your favorite Afrobeat artist? Bonner Boy. Why why Bonner Boy? He's from River State. I rep, oh, I rep I my see. city. I see. <laughs> Do you watch football? No, I don't, but I used to be an Arsenal fan because of Thierry Henry many years ago. Mm, so Thierry Henry is like your football idol. Yeah, you like that Ronaldo. Uh, well, Ronaldo, maybe because I was dating somebody who was a Real Madrid fan, so mm. maybe Ronaldo. You're in love. <laughs> 
<laughs> I still have his justice. <laughs> oh, I see. Nice. So are you an indoor person or an outdoor person? Indoor. Indoor. So I, I'm, I don't know whether I'm an introverted extrovert or extroverted introvert, but I love to be indoors, honestly. So maybe because, I think because when I was growing up, my mom used to beat me a lot. My parents used to flog me. Don't go outside. Stay inside. Go inside. So I think I just got used to being indoors. So if you leave me alone, I can be indoors for a week straight. What's your favorite quote? Nothing stops a man until a man stops himself. By who? Is that your quote? So. Uh, um, Nothing stops a man until a man stops, stops himself. himself. Oh, that's uh, so beautiful. Yeah, so that's... So it keeps me going. So, I mean, when I'm trying to like, when I'm a bit low, I realize that Omo, if you don't push yourself up, nobody's going, nobody's going to push you. So. When it comes to the business you're doing, mm-hmm. who do you look up to? Mo Abudu. Why? Because I've seen how she's been able to transition. So like, she was a, I mean, she was somebody who is just do like broadcasting, interview people, and from there she transitioned into having a media company, and from there she transitioned into having a I mean, Ebony Life is like yeah. one of the, I mean, she's like taking over now. So I feel, I, I look up to Mabudu a lot. She's, is, and then maybe on the side, maybe Ibuku Awoshika. She's not in my field, but mm. she's somebody who I've seen. She's been a trailblazer and I, I admire what she does. And she's been able to put family and business together. So if you're not in media today, what would you have been doing? Right oh, now? business, buying and selling, importer, exporter. <laughs> That's what we're doing. <laughs> Beautiful. So, what has been your biggest win since you started Port Harcourt in Pictures? Okay, so for me, um, <laughs> so I think, okay, I have a lot. One was the day I received my first payments in euros mm. from a big media company. Wow, in, what year was that? That was 2020, I think, Beautiful. yes. Second was uh, me being featured on Top 50 Voices. In fact, it's the pinned post on my page. Nice. I mean, I was alongside Ibuka Awoshika and a lot of other big media, pe- big media gurus and business moguls. I think that was, big, that was huge for me. I mean, to be, to be recognized beyond Port Harcourt City. So imagine somebody from Lagos calling you, ma'am, you've been nominated for Top 50 voices mm-hmm. impactful voices to celebrate international women's day i think That's i think that was cool. big for me then also being um through my work as portacot in pictures i got to be the creator of the portacot global shapers and i represented portacot in geneva switzerland i think that was big for me big for me and that you know to not people to like I, i'm able to represent portacot city beyond the shores of portacot city itself mm-hmm. so i think that's been big for me I hope I hope it falls into your line of big wins, please. Beautiful. I mean, big wins is relative to everybody. I mean, a big win for me right now is that you're on this show. That's yeah. that's that's a big win. So of course that's a big win for you. How do you handle scandals? I mean, you're a blogger. That means that every now and then there's gonna be something, right? How how do you handle that? So to be honest, um, in the past it wasn't easy for me. So I'm somebody who. It's very emotional, so I flare up a lot, and I've heard a lot of things about me. And what I do is, I go to my page, I call, call out the person or fights back. And uh, but right now, I think I've 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 come to realize you know, that people would always say what they want to say. People always test you. So in the past, I didn't handle it very well. I mean, because of that, I've even gained a lot of haters, a lot of people who are like, who is that girl, and all, oh, because. I was telling somebody the other day, even during um, elections, there were a lot of things said about me. During, um, I've heard people say things about me. When I flare up, it goes. But right now, I think I've been able to just push myself, know myself, and understand that they, people would always push me. It's left for me to decide how I react. They will always put these things towards me. And now what I do is I just consume myself with the Holy Spirit and then thank God for this. <laughs> So he's always telling my daughter, calm down, calm down. So, but it's, it, I'm, I'm, have, I'm, maybe because I've also not been, I don't carry, I don't, what's the word, I don't celebrate scandals on my page, I don't carry a lot of, bad I don't news. amplify bad news, so people are also easy on me, but I know that the day I, the day I, I don't know if I can use the word, for, the day I fuck up, they will bring out my leg in public, but it's not, it's not easy, I've had a lot of people say things about me, and I'm sure they're waiting for me to just, so just zuzu and you'll bring it over. Mm. In the past, I've, I've not handled it very well, but I've grown. I mean, and that's what I'm thankful about. I've grown and then I understand that my page is beyond Port Harcourt. In, I mean, 
Portacos in pictures is beyond Tonya Brick. So mm-hmm. I've also been able to separate Tonya Brick from Portacos in pictures. So right now, if you've been following me lately, you see that um, for the past one year, it's been peace and vibes. Mm-hmm. It's been peace and vibes. It's not, I don't even call people out on my page anymore. Mm-hmm. I just want to promote, I just want to stick to the vision of promoting Portacos City, the good people, the good culture, the good places, and the good life. So the bad life can go, can go far away. Let's water carry it far away for all I care. Now, if, if, you're, you know, in media like us, if you do a lot of stuff online, you know that your day is coming. And when I say your day is coming, I mean your day of dragging is coming. <laughs> Every one of us will That's experience it. That's my greatest it. fear. We'll experience it one, at one time or the other. Have you been dragged before? Ah. Have they dragged you before? Well, I was, I don't know what, well, drag, well, I think, yeah, well, yes, I've been dragged. I've been dragged and I don't know if that issue has to do with dragging, but yes, I've been dragged, and that's why I just tried to steal my lane. Just tell us about it. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, I've been dragged. Yeah, oh, what am I? Yes, I've been dragged. What am I saying? Yes. Some people actually said I stole one time and put my picture on social, on sh- let me say, social media. Mm. <laughs> on social media, my, my face has been put up as a thief before. I've also been called out by a celebrity that I posted something about him and all. Um, I don't, I don't, don't ask me how I handled it because it wasn't, it wasn't a good, it wasn't a good experience. But I thank God, like I said, I thank God for growth. Mm-hmm. And I thank God that I came to the reali- realization that Portacot TV just is beyond me and I'm just a worker. Mm. I'm just an employee of Portacot mm. and not Portacot in picture. So what I do now is I do not equate myself to Portacot in picture, but I see mm. myself as below the brand and I respect the authority of the brand mm. before I react always online. Mm. Now, how do you handle the business of Portacot in pictures? Because it's one thing to go into blogging. It's one thing to now understand the business that comes with it. Getting clients, negotiating deals, staffing, building your team. Because I know that you don't do all of those things alone mm-hmm. right now. I mean, maybe you used to do it alone before, mm-hmm. but I'm sure you're at a place now where you don't do all of those things alone. So how have you been able to handle the business of building Porta Cotton Pictures? So first off, um, I have I mean I have a team of pe- I have a team who I work with and I thank God that they understand me. Even those who say, Oh Mark, can we work with you? Can we help you? They've been able to understand the vision. Mm-hmm. Then secondly, I think also because we also realize that our first aim as Portacot in pictures is to promote the city. So we don't first our own first major aim is to promote the city. Then for the business aspects, I have like partners, I have people who who manage these things for me. So my own job is to market the brand and mm. create content. Why they help with me help with content creation, publicity and publicize my content, publishing my content and mm. also amplification of my content. Mm-hmm. So I think that those things have been put put in place because I do not like I said, I don't I didn't even have an idea or know anything about blogging or content creation, but with time when I've been able to delegate duties to these various brands and people who have been able to help me with the business of protocols and pictures. How are you able to separate business money from personal money? Uh, trust me, it's not easy. It's not easy. And I don't think I've been able to fully do that because we still, sometimes when we are checking our, at the end of the month, when we are trying to check our records, we see that this and that. So it's not been easy because as a content creator, almost every money goes back into the business. So. Mm-hmm. There was a time when we were checking about how we've not even been able to save. I mean, we see other creators say, other creators and other people say, oh, we've been able to have, we've built it, we've been able to save billions, we've been able to save millions, but at the time we did not even have savings because every money we had was put back into buying of contents, gadgets, buying, I mean, for you to even go, I mean, for even to source out content, you, 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 you don't check, you have to that's pay for transport. So the con- every yeah. moment you're buying a content gadget, after you buy a camera, you're buying a light, after you buy a light, you're buying a mic, after you what's buy a mic. The, what's the biggest amount you spent on a gadget? Welcome to Kaizen Digital Academy, your one-stop African platform for online education. At Kaizen, we are bells for the African market, teaching people how to make money online using high-income digital skills. Do you want to learn and implement faster? Do you want to increase your earning capacity and gain digital skills? Then visit kaizenacademy.co, create an account with us today and voila, you are on your way to making your dreams come through with Kaizen, the African school of digital skills. You don't want to know, please. I spent, well, when you say gadget, I bought an iPhone 14 Pro Max when it came out and I know how much I spent mm. on it and how much, 
I used to bring it from Canada to this place. So I think that's like the biggest money I spent on a content creation gadget. And it's not because, like I tell my assistant, it's not because it's luxury, it's a necessity as a content creator mm -hmm. because one of the issues I, I face as a content creator is not getting clear videos. And mm -hmm. clear videos, I mean, no matter the message you're passing, if your videos are not clear and crisp, nobody's going to listen to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you and I both know that an, an average social media user's span, attention span is 0 0.05 seconds. Mm -hmm. So the moment they swipe and it's not, your content is not compelling enough for them to look, they swipe off. So it's not been easy, like, it's not been easy, but it's, it's a necessity for you to build up and keep putting out keep gathering content creation. I mean, if I saw my content creation going today, I mean, I'm a billionaire. Mm. Thank God say we'll never see my shoulder, we'll mm. not see my back. Mm. But, so that's what we've been, we've been doing. That's the other side of content creation. So behind every cre clear, crisp, or even behind every content is a truckload a of, of content creation gadgets. <laughs> I, I get it. Now you're what we'll call a social media expert. You've been able to grow these brands from Porta Cotton Pictures and you know your Instagram, your Twitter, your Facebook, your TikTok. Cumulatively, you have like over 300,000 followers. Yeah, across all platforms. About yes. across all platforms right now. Somebody is trying to go into a business, the person is trying to grow on social media. What are the top three tips you give to the person? So, first of all, I always tell people know why you're starting out. Why do you want to go into, con why do you want to go into whatever you want to do? Um, for me, I had a reason why I wanted to promote Porta City, and that was why it helped me. I stayed with the vision. So you need to know why. Why do you want to become a creator, and and why do you want to do this? Is it to make money, or to actually entertain? So like I always tell, if you are not entertaining people, if you are not educating, if you are not informing people online you're going to lose track of your focus. So for mm. those who are starting out, know your why. Why are you starting this thing? And then um, create content around that why. Mm -hmm. For me now, mm -hmm. what has helped me is because you, no matter what, you can never see a content that is not from Potako City, either from a Potako indigene or a Potako resident or a Potako person outside. So I think that's been able to help. So you need to, uh, because we want to that we can't be posting anything from Lagos yeah. or from... Abuja, mm -hmm. or from the US, mm -hmm. unless it's a particular person in those in that region mm -hmm. doing something extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's also because we know our why. We know that we are Portacot in pictures, so we're supposed to promote everything that circles around Portacot. Mm -hmm. Secondly, also um, read more about what you want to go into. So I hear people say, "Oh, I want to be ma, I want to be like you," and they follow me for one or two jobs, and the next day they run away. They don't. I'll call them. They will never pick my call again because. <laughs> Because they feel like it's just to sit down and, and post and they will pay me for ads. There's a lot. There's a lot behind. So you need to also read up on whatever you want to go. Like I tell people, you don't have to be everything. You don't have to be... There, I mean, there are a lot of things. I told somebody, why not start up chickens in Portacourt City? I mean, trust me, you'll be surprised that... Like, I don't know how many of you have traveled, but if you, from movies, you don't see chickens on the road in, when you travel out of Nigeria or in the US, or in mm. the UK. Mm. Trust me, if you start chickens in Botaco, a white man will be glued to your pay because he has never seen chickens cross the road mm. in his city. Mm. So I think also be creative. Think outside the box. Know your why. Then also read about, why, read about what you want to do. So don't just go into blogging because you want to do this, because you want to make money. Know what, have a mission, have a vision, and know what you want to do. Then what's the third thing? What should I say? Um, <laughs> Now you know you're the jagger band. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, just let's stick to two. Know your why and the reason why and who your target audience is. Mm -hmm. Who do you want to reach out to in this mm -hmm. thing? Mm -hmm. For me, I know the people. My Mine is for Portacourt people and lovers of Portacourt, both entities and residents. So I think if you know those two things, it will be able to help you forge ahead. But without those, if you don't know, trust me, you'll be... Thank God for why. Because I've, I've had people send me all sorts of content. Madam, post this content. They cut head for this place. Madam, if I've had people even send me fake news, and I, spoke, I remember during one of the elections, um, 2019, I've, I had people send me where they were snatching boxes. But guess what? It wasn't even in Portacourt City. But because I was eager to post the news, my team was we eager to post it. We posted it. But guess what? They were even speaking Yoruba language inside that thing. And we were also dragged. So I think because at that moment, it was my starting phase, I didn't understand. So right now, what we do is we know why. We know that, okay, no matter what, if we had, if we had stuck to our why, then we, knew, we would have known that snatching of boxes were not part of our aim. Yep, yep, yes, yep. we're supposed to post out the good things, but would that, and then that wouldn't have occurred. So know your why, so nobody will be able to push you up 
put, um, swindle you and then also know who your target audience is and who you want to relay this content to. What is one thing we don't know about you? Uh, okay, so in 2019, I was a deputy gubernatorial candidate. Are you serious? For the, for the elections in River State. Are you serious? <laughs> Under the leadership party of Nigeria. Hmm. You're a deputy. How are you carrying yourself that time? Right? Uh, one Which time deputy apart. gubernatorial <laughs> aspirant. Well, it, it came. They wanted somebody from the Riverine area, and mm-hmm. luckily for me, my page was showed to the governorship candidate, and then the party picked me, and it was fun. I mean, while well, it lasted. So if you Google Tony Breaks, you see my name there. <laughs> so you're a one-time, one-time politician. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> well. Nice. Do you have like imposter syndrome? Somebody, a big brand is out to you. They're willing to give you this huge sum of money for it to come to something. You feel like, ah, Jesus Christ. So, <laughs> many times, many times. And that's why um, I like to interact. And I like things like this, listening to people who have been there before. So, a lot of times, I mean, there are many times I felt less less of myself. I felt like, oh, I can't do this. But thank God for good people around me and also my assistant. So they told me, oh, my, you can't do this. My cousin, I feel like I can't do this. I'm not enough. Like, for instance, I said, my piece started as a blog. And next thing I saw that people started dancing on social media to sell a car. Mm-hmm. Dancing. And I'm like, oh, yeah. uh-uh. how would you go and dance? How, how would you have to do this? And when I even started off, I used to be very loud. So when I'm talking, I'm like, hello, everybody. I'll be talking a lot. And people will laugh at me and, oh, boy. I thank God that I've been able to listen, I've been able to watch like people like watch people and thank God for mentors who have been able to guide me and pull me through. Even till now, I feel like I'm less less of myself. And that's why, like I said, you have to focus once you know why you're doing something, and then you have the people who support you. Focus on the supporters. Focus on your supporters and leave those who don't even think. Because trust me, no matter what, people who don't like you will not like you. There's nothing you're going to do. So Thank God for good people who have also come around and have, and have pushed me and all because it's, imposter syndrome never ends. Yeah, I mean, I don't the best think, of us. Exactly, exactly. So I don't think so. It, it, it keeps coming. It's you a f- problem that you you keep having. I mean, you may be comfortable at this stage now and then before mm-hmm. you know, DBC reaches out to yeah. you and like, we'd like what to do in Porta Court <laughs> and then it sets in again. So I think it's a problem that will never overcome. Honestly, and I think it's, 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 it's what affects me because I, I have a lot of business ideas but that's, Imposter syndrome keeps coming and say, Tony, you can't do this. No, what if this happens? And no, and oh, but I feel like one of the ways I've been able to manage it, I've not been able to overcome it, is that I've been able to um, interact more and move to the side of people who positive people. Mm. So I move with people who who push me to be more and who mm. encourage me, who see that yes, I'm not perfect, but I can be almost near perfect. Mm-hmm. So that's how I've been able to overcome imposter syndrome. Oh, sorry manage imposter syndrome <laughs> let's talk about negotiation it's a very like important aspect for people who, who like to do business or who are, who, who are doing business right okay how did you get good at negotiating because i'm sure there are sometimes people want to come and pay you something that is not worth they just look at you they size you up and they want to and then you you, you have to stamp your price and all that how do you get good at that first of all who told you i'm good at that where did you hear that it's showing in your face ah, i don't <laughs> it's well, showing i know my worth <laughs> <laughs> well i know my worth but it's not been easy because by the time you reject this brand second brand third brand social media is about numbers and there was a time when i was almost rejected everything because i wanted to prove my worth but guess what Right now, there's a lot, there's an influx of a lot of creators and social media people. So you might know your worth, but people will never, people will not give you your worth. So mm. what I've been able to do is, um, first, I've been able to also harness value for value. Okay. Then I've also been able to create more valuable content. So people say that unless you give value, they won't, um, you won't receive value. Mm. So I think one thing was I was also able to raise my, so when I started off, I used to post just, infrastructures, roads, mm-hmm. buildings in Portaco City. And then I transitioned to, to um, people, then, then culture, way of life. I started digging deep into the history of Portaco City. And then I moved from 5K clients to a lot, 5,500. From <laughs> clients that would pay me 5K to those who would give me like extra 500. So I think for me, what I was able to do was um, put out more value then also, I've been able to create a value for value. So if you cannot afford my rates, um, I, I, I 
I ask you for the value in exchange. So, um, and it's also helped me. And then I've also been able to, I realize that I'm not for everybody. Mm-hmm. So I've, I, I've, I don't water down my brand for anybody. So you come to me and say, because first of all, my page is not even a, it wasn't, it wasn't set out for business. Of course, yes, I had to monetize along. So I have to keep to the vision that, to the mission that, oh, first of all, my aim is to promote Port Harcourt. Port Harcourt people, culture, places and things. So, and I don't really put business above. But secondly, for, for people watering down my brand, what I do is I, sometimes I outrightly reject these offers. But then again, I remember that it's about numbers. By the time you reject one, two, three offers, people don't see, like, something does happen now. So people ask me, Toy, why didn't you post this brand? And I'm like, okay, I had other things to do. So in a case where two, three brands want me, what I do is I go for the one that would bring value to my brand. I don't have to be everywhere. I'm not for everybody. I'm not ice cream. Mm-hmm. I'm not ice cream in pictures. I'm putting across in pictures. So, <laughs> so I think that's what has helped me. Yeah, I've seen you collaborate with a, a lot of creators, right? You know, typically people want to compete and all that, but I see you like collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. What's the idea behind that? Collaboration is key. So, um, with the way social media is now. We're trying to push the collaboration over competition. I mean, Port Harcourt is a very small city. Mm-hmm. And I realized that all the, all the, this thing is not working. And collaboration, yes, it's been, it's, 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 it's as hard as own side effects, but the positive effects have been more, have been more visible. So why I do that is because I realized that, okay, most people even look up, I've, or not, people look up to me as somebody who is a pioneer of new media and social media in Port Harcourt City. Mm-hmm. And I've been laid back for a, for a long time. But I've had people reach out to me to say, oh, Tony, let's do this. And it's been working because your person, your, your, my audience sees your work, your audience sees my work, and we both grow together. I mean, mm-hmm. there's enough space for the birds to fly in the sky. So there's, I mean, what we're, I'm trying to, I'm a, I'm a preacher of love, and I'm a preacher of collaboration over competition in Port Harcourt and Nigeria as a whole. Beautiful. <laughs> now, I usually like to close off with this question. How do you save and invest your money? Now, a lot of people make money. They get paid, gigs come, and all that, and boom, they blow it away, hoping that another one is going to come. You know? And you know, there are seasons in life sometimes. There are seasons where the deals are coming in abundance. There are other seasons where it, it comes in trickles and all that. So how are you able to stay afloat? How do you save and, and invest your money? So I'm not a, I also, I'm not a, well, I spend a lot, but I'm not somebody who is big on frivolities. Okay. So what I've been able to do is I invest a lot. Mm. So once that money comes, I invest a lot. And it's easy for me on my low days, it's easy for me to go back to that. Of course, I wouldn't, I wouldn't shy away from the fact that there's demand for money, especially when you have to pay salaries. I mean, mm-hmm. how do you tell your staff that you cannot pay salaries? Mm-hmm. I've, I mean, I've, there are times I've even owed salaries a month after the due date, and uh, no, and that was because I wasn't able to manage myself. But lately, what I do is I try my best to invest, and I've also been able to cut down on my excesses. So mm-hmm. I'm not somebody who, like I told myself, I eat once a day. I don't do fast myself. So if I cannot afford this, I quietly tell you no. And I've also um, I've, I've I've limited the um, borrowing. So I limit borrowing. So borrowing is also one of the it's a, I mean, that habit is... Well, I w- let me not say what they will drag me because they said that God they still borrow though. So, for please, um, I, I just cut my coat according to my size. Mm-hmm. And the difference is, yeah, especially when you're not borrowing for business purposes. Uh-huh, exactly. So, and then I, I do not... I do not... Um, I, I cut down on my excesses a lot. So, I'm not a very um, big spender. Mm-hmm. So, you don't see me... I'll drink the one I can drink. You don't see me going overboard... And all like that. You don't see me places. If 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 I simply cannot afford this, I'll tell you that. Oh, I'm sorry, I cannot afford this. And then I stick to what I can afford and do. And then I eat once a day because that's what I can afford. <laughs> do you invest in real estate? Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Entrepreneurs Connect Show. My name is Claire Onyekachi, and today I want to introduce you to the Viewer of the Week Challenge. Now, what's this challenge about? We want you, our viewer, to watch every episode of the Entrepreneurs Connect Show. Take a picture of yourself watching the show and make a post 
on Instagram, tagging us at the Entrepreneurs Connect Show. At the end of the week, we will, of course, decide who our viewer of the week is, and this viewer gets a gift from us. Excited, right? Now, do you want to be the viewer of the week? Who would be the viewer of the week? Let's find out when you join the challenge. None for now. Okay, when you say real estate, I have a couple of lands which mm -hmm. I acquired. Real estate? Uh -huh, yes, sir. And currently I live in my own house. So, real estate, come on. <laughs> well, of course, it has to not give me money because I don't pay. I'm, I'm living inside. It's not bringing, but I have a couple of investments that I've done, family and myself, in real estate. Beautiful. Big me doing. No, be so big this, me. this session has been so insightful. We have one minute more. Do you go to the gym? No, I don't. Why don't you go to the gym? I will drag you now. Because it is stressful for why me. I mean, I can't. I why pant a you, lot. Why don't you sweat it out? I pant. Honestly, I've tried. Even during. You pant a lot, right? That's the more reason you should go to the gym. Come on, gym bros, are you with me? That's <laughs> that's the more reason you should go to the gym. It's a lot of work for me. I mean, I have to I have to stand up, wear mm -hmm. my gym gear, mm -hmm. wear my shoes, mm -hmm. this this. And, Unless maybe for content purposes, no, probably. Okay, you can combine it. Just just so you're. If it's for content, for, content. Uh, that book. What do you think? Well, maybe. Uh, well, mm -hmm. I did that during COVID year. I was. I was going to the gym for content creation. Mm -hmm. Then, then it's just stressful for me. That moment, I'll use that moment to, to sleep. I rather sleep I than mean, go to the gym. gym. Is, is for health. Yeah, uh, well, but how about You're a medical person? Yeah, but how about watching my meals? I, I, wa I yes. watch my all, meals. I cut down on what I eat. They all work hand in hand. <laughs> but my, I used to, wait, are you trying to say I'm fat now? I, I, no, that, so you're trying to say I'm. Uh, you put yen in my see, mouth. So you see, so yeah, I just I'm, said I'm hitting the gym tomorrow. That is good to keep fit. Yeah. As a young person, so, yeah, I can so see. that when we grow old, you understand. Okay, so we'll aside eating agile. healthy, I will try and keep fit. Exactly. You won. So you have, you have, you have a content. Just, so we are going to see gym content very soon. Joseph won. Tony, Tony Zero. Are we seeing? Are we seeing gym content very soon? <laughs> okay, I'll try. You are making a public commitment. I will try. I'll think about yes. it. <laughs> All right, well, hello, Nude. Thank you very much for um, coming on the show today. And to you guys who have been watching us, thank you very much. Also, make sure to leave a comment as usual. Tell us what you learned, what was the best part of this show for you. And we'll see you again next week, Friday, same time, 7 p.m. W A T. Bye. Take care of yourself, everybody. Cheers. Bye.